from Alec from Team 3491 Fix It. Um, this is the fourth installment in our series of Euphoria videos, but this video is actually now sort of to replace video one. As many of you may may or may not know, uh, the FTC app has updated since the beginning of July to version 2.2. I believe it's on right now. So version 2 brought integration of Euphoria and all of its uh, libraries directly into the FTC app, so we thought we'd do a new video showing how to do it with the new system, as it's much simpler and more just easier to use than the original system we showed you. So basically that means if you've watched this, don't watch video one anymore. Okay, so first we're going to Oh, actually, one other note, for those of you who haven't watched any of our other videos, Euphoria is a computer vision package uh, managed by PTC, and so it's really useful for finding objects, and especially in this game, with the image targets located under each of the four beacons, these targets have been designed such that Euphoria can track them and then give your robot position data based on its relative position to the images. So we're going to go ahead and open up Android Studio. I just have a fresh version of uh, version 2.2 of the FTC app with nothing else in it. So I'm going to go to the team code module, which is now where you save your code in case this is the very first time you've opened Android Studio since the update. That's where you create your new classes. I'm going to call this Vuforia op. Oops, I just called it Vuforia. Let's call this Euphoria Op. There we are. And this is going to extend a linear op mode. Linear op mode. Implement methods. Okay, so now that we're here, basically, um, one of the things we need to do is we need to tell Euphoria a little bit about how we're going to be using using it in this. Uh, instance of itself. So we're going to cr have to create Vuforia localizer dot parameters. Um, I'll just call this params equals new Vuforia localizer dot parameters. And we are going to pass this r dot id dot camera monitor view ID. So this just means that on the screen of your robot controller what the camera sees will show up. If for like battery saving purposes a little bit I guess if you don't really care if, that it's on the screen just leave the constructor with parameter lists and it won't appear on the screen. So the first parameter we're going to set is which camera direct which camera we want to use so most of the cam all the cameras that are legal for FTC have a front and back camera. So we're just going to say params.camera direction um, equals back. Most of you will be using the back camera as it has better resolution, but if you want, you can use the front camera. Um, the next thing we have to do is uh, get a license key. So params dot euphoria license key. And so this is going to be a string, but to get this string we actually have to go to the Vuforia developers page and get an individual license for the our team. So I'm going to go to the Vuforia developer portal. I'm on the home page here. Have to go to develop and then license manager and we're going to add a license key. So, um, this is development. We're not selling this app. Uh, FTC app. It's a mobile. Um, and then click confirm. I'm not going to bother confirming because I already have a license. Um, but actually, maybe I will just to show you guys. So we go here, then this will pop up in this massively long string, copy, and then paste it in between quotation marks into your into your uh, op mode. This is a really long and terrible string, but you have to use it. So that's that. 
So the next parameter, um, this is sort of more a fun parameter and doesn't really matter that much, but you can say camera monitor feedback um, and you can set that to either be axes, which is the default, so this will show like the XYZ axis on your, the target sees. It can be teapot, um, so it'll show a teapot if it sees the beacon. Uh, it can be buildings, or you can just set it to none, but that's sort of boring. So, But I'm just going to use axes because that's actually sort of useful. Teapots are just fun. So the next thing we're going to do is create our Vuforia localizer. So this is just what the new FTC app uses to sort of instantiate Vuforia and deal with it in the background. So we're going to call this just Vuforia. Equals Vuforia localizer. Oh, sorry, equals class factory. Dot create Vuforia localizer, and then we're going to pass it the parameters we created. So that's why the parameters have to be the first thing, because you can't create Vuforia if you don't know how you're creating it. Then another thing that we're going to do, and this is actually just is say Vuforia. Dot set hint. And what basically this is sort of a note. Hints are basically something you wanted to do, but if it's not supported, it won't do it. But it also won't throw an exception. But we're going to say all capital hint dot um, max simultaneous image targets. What we're using are images, so these are image targets. And we're going to say four because there are four beacons on the field. By default, the FTC app will only track one beacon at a time, so that means if you saw two in your field of view, it might be swapping back and forth, and this could confuse your robot, but by saying it, it can track up to all four simultaneously, it means that that isn't a possible error. So the next thing we're going to do is actually load the beacon images, and these are, once again, given to us by default. So we're going to make Vuforia trackables and we're going to call these beacons because they're going to be the images under all the beacons equals euphoria dot load trackables from asset and we're going to say ftc underscore 2016 dash 17 so where does that string come from it sort of seems random so basically to determine where this is if you click over to project and you can see all the files if you actually go up to the FTC robot controller module in the assets folder there will be some uh, an XML file and so you want the name of the XML file before dot XML and then you can if you open it you can see that it has the, all the different images so the wheel picture tools Legos and gears and these are the the dimensions of that image Okay, so just to make it a little bit simpler to understand what's going on here, we're just going to um, set the names of all of these. Dot set name, and it goes in the same order. So wheels. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Get one set name wheels then tools lego and gears this just makes it a little bit easier once we're doing telemetry then because this is linear op mode we'll wait for start once it's started we have to say beacons dot activate basically this actually is when Vuforia starts tracking the objects there's no point in tracking them before you call wait for start because you're just using battery that you like the field hasn't been randomized yet so there's no point in doing that and wasting your battery so then we'll make our actual loop while op mode is active we are going okay so now we're gonna make a for each loop so for those of you who don't know what a for each loop is 
I'm going to type it out and then I'll type out a regular for loop um, just so you can sort of see the difference. Um, I'll just call this beak in beacons. So typing that is the exact same as going for int i equals zero. i is less than beacons dot size b e a beacons dot size i plus plus and then euphoria trackable beak equals beacons dot get i so the this these two loops do the exact same thing it's just a little bit cleaner and simpler to use a for each loop um, but if you're more comfortable with a basic for loop by all means use that it will make no difference okay so we're going to make an open GL matrix. Um, you really don't have to understand what this is, but um, this just basically contains all of the information about the about the thing you're tracking. So, Euphoria, we have to cast this trackable default listener. It's sort of long, um, but that's what it is. Beak dot get listener. Um, dot get pose get, get pose just in case you didn't notice the bracket has to go bef after the get listener bracket and before the dot for dot get pose so you're casting the listener in beak to a euphoria trackable default listener and then you're uh, calling the method get pose so basically there is a possibility that pose will equal null if um, if uh, it doesn't see the object. So you want to say if pose does not equal null, then we'll start actually looking at what's there. Vector f. Translation. Translation equals dot get translation whoops dot get translation um, for some reason if you just go pose and look at the element it returns zero I'm not entirely sure why but just call get translation and then you'll have no issues telemetry so let's just display what we're seeing on the screen so telemetry dot add data uh, will get peak dot get name um, so this basically set just so we know which object we're looking at and then we'll say plus translation and then we'll actually just display the two string method is overridden so the object will ob automatically be converted to a string then double uh, degrees to turn so this is what you could actually use on your robot to turn towards um, the beacon. So we're going to math dot two degrees and then we'll say math dot a tan two. So this is the arc tangent where you're passing x and y. It will return a value in radians so then we're going to convert radians to degrees because um, that's more understandable. You want to get um, translation dot get um, one and translation dot get two. This is if your phone is vertical, because this is going to represent y your y axis and your z axis. But if your phone, if you if you on your robot have mounted in landscape mode, you're going to want to say translation dot get zero translation dot get two. Um, then we'll just add that telemetry. Uh, data beak dot get name plus degrees and then we are just going to put that in degrees to turn and then at the end of our loop we're just going to update the telemetry because that is another new thing in this uh, update you have to call telemetry dot update 
And there we go. So at this point, we can download it to our robot controller. OK. Cradle will run, and then it'll be all good. So now we'll just show you a short clip of what it actually does. But uh, thank you for watching. OK, so as you can see here, we're going to select the Vuforia tutorial op mode. So we press on it, it, the camera view will open up, and we can see what's on the screen. As you can see, there are axes on all four images, which means that Vuforia can see them all. And if you look on the driver station screen, the telemetry is showing us translation data. Unfortunately, there isn't really enough time to show it in this video. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at Concept Vuforia Navigation. So for those of you who don't know, Concept Vuforia Navigation is the demonstration program that outlines how uh, one could use Vuforia to determine an absolute XY position on the FTC field. So in case you're wondering what, an F what that even means, um, in, the do in the doc tutorial um, folder, you can see FTC uh, field coordinate system definition .pdf, and so that'll just tell you all about the different how the field coordinates work. Uh, so that you can use that to navigate. Okay, so basically what is happening here is they're going to make the Vuforia localizer just like we did in Vuforia op. They're going to set the trackables. This is stones and ships, which is another option, but this could easily be changed to FTC 2016-17. Um, these uh, are things you must set. Well, millimeters per inch, that, that's constant, but uh, your how wide your robot is. Um, so it's a full 18 inch cube, it's a 16 inch cube. Um, FTC field width, that's not going to change, so you can just leave that alone. Um, so basically what's going to happen is the red target location on field is a matrix that's going to, based on the robot, we'll see one of the images, so let's say it's the Lego image image under one of the beacons, this OpenGL matrix will talk about how to translate or it'll relate the location of the image of Lego on the wall to the field coordinate system. So everything is central around the field coordinate system, so this will convert it into the field coordinate system this does the same with another with the other um, with another beacon. Um, this only has two things up on the walls, but for this year's game, as obviously there are four, you'd probably want to have four of these, and you'd need to figure out um, where exactly you are. So here it's just a translation in one axis. You may have to have a translation in the other axis as well. Um, because they're not directly on the center points, obviously. So this one here, the phone location on the robot, so this relates um, the location of the phone relative to the actual robot. So if your phone is rotated 90 degrees and pointing backwards, obviously when you get closer, that's going to change where your robot actually is in a absolute 3D space. So this relates the robot, the phone's position to the robot, so that that can be used to relate the robot's position to the field. Um, if you have any questions about it, please post in the comments. Um, but basically, once that happens, uh, telemetry, wait for start. You start actually tracking, and then while it's running, it's just displaying the position of the robot on the field. Um, so yeah, so this way of navigating the field is just an alternative way that you might be able to find your way around the field using an absolute coordinate system, but by all means, it's not the only way. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.